Boom. Okay, we're live, guys. Welcome to another episode of the Conquer of Wealth podcast. Today, we got a, an old friend of mine, Charlie Leary, five-time UK lightweight champion and currently signed to Bellator. I mean, how does that sound? When you first started doing MMA or just training, yeah. did you think you'd be five-time you know, UK lightweight champion fighting for Bellator? What was in your mind? No, um... When I first started, I thought, yeah, I know what I'm going for. I really think I'm going to be able to push and, 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 and get to a high level. Um, I've had some ups and downs, and at some point I thought, oh, it's never going to work out. But, um, but here in the, the, the five-time champion, I think, I think I've surpassed um, where I thought I would be. Um, winning five belts is always nice, isn't it? But actually getting signed to Bellator um, is, is the pinnacle, really. Do you know what I mean? They're the second biggest in the world. Um, they're... It, Let's me uh, fight full time. So yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased with where I'm at with it. Yeah, mate. I mean, I mean, first of all, I want to take my hat off to you because I, I remember not when you first started off, but in the early days when you were training with uh, Crossface back in, in you know, the hut in the shed thing in, in South Oxford. Yeah, yeah, and it was, um, you know, I think you were just having a couple of amateur bouts maybe back then, or a couple of semi-pro bouts maybe really in, in the early, early days and. Your, your dedication, I mean, on me being an athlete myself and having been a boxer and now a powerlifter, and, and on the show, we only have people that have done things in their sport and are adding value. And, I, and I've got to take my hat off to commitment because, yeah, you get ups and downs, but you haven't stopped. And to be five times, you know, UK champion, and now you're in Benetton, and, and hopefully that takes you up to another level. Um, yeah, that, that, that's crazy, and it's great to see someone that I I know locally that that you know dug their heels in, um, just got off their ass and really fucking cracked on. Because I think I think um, with your commitment, you probably got a lot further to go still, and and you'll you'll believe that deep down as well. I'm sure. Yeah, I think I think so. I mean, don't get me wrong. It took it took a lot of hard work and like you say, a bit of dedication. It took some sacrifice. Um, I mean when. When I first met you, we was uh, working in a gym and, and playing football and, and enjoying yeah. life and we were partying and, and doing whatever we wanted, really. Um, I was then, when I first started training martial arts, I was working on the building, so I was actually enjoying it. I really liked working in the building and stuff like that, but it just didn't give me any time to train. And then uh, so I had to make a tough decision and decided to get, get a job working nights um, at a supermarket, because that was the only one that was around at the time, just to let me be able to train during the day. So... Uh, like I say, it was tough a couple of times when I'm sitting there working 10 hour shifts at night and waking up and going training and things ain't going right. It was hard work, but um, thankfully it's, it seems to now be paying off. And like I say, I've got, I've got a quality family that uh, I can now look after by doing something that I love. So it's, it's all good. Yeah, amazing. So what, I mean, what got you into it in the first place? Because uh, did, you, did you do martial arts when you were young or is it... You know, it was like, it goes one way or the other, doesn't it? You either done martial arts when you were young or you was out rucking too much. And I think I need, to, I need to channel that energy a little bit more or, or something. Maybe some people just took a love to it because they watched it online. Where, where did your journey start, really? It was a weird one. It was a weird one because uh, I never actually done any sort of martial arts or any combat or anything like that. But my brother was a really, uh, really good amateur boxer. Yes, but I do Playing football, a bit, yeah, playing football at a decent level. So I was, I was at Watford as a schoolboy. Um, I was playing semi-pro at Wilton and all this sort of thing. So I'd always had it in my mind I was going to be a pro footballer. So yeah. I never, I really liked the boxing and I liked the martial arts, but I literally spent all day every day playing football. So I never got into it. I always watched it, but never actually done any of it. Um, as I got older and and um, the the football dream started to take a little bit of a dive. I mean, I started falling out of love with football. It just I. I used to like the physical game, do you know what I mean? I'd like to put a hard challenge in and, and, and have a little uh, thing and, and it just started getting taken away from you with people falling over all the time and the rest yeah, of the yeah, yeah. Um, And I'd always loved the UFC. My brother had bought some of the first ones on video, I think it was. So we'd watch them on video. So I always loved it. Um, but never knew where to train. I literally like, didn't have anywhere to go. I was looking at places like London Shoot and all that, but it was two different trains to get there and things like that. Um, and then I was in um, David Lloyd one time, working out in David Lloyd, and I had an Affliction t-shirt on. 
and someone goes to me, oh, do you, do you train martial arts, uh, MMA? And I was like, oh, no, I wish. And he went, oh, it's a plate in South Oxy. you like, go and check it out. Mm. So I Googled it, and it said it was Dave training. And I was like, there's no way there's a UFC guy training at a scout hut in South Oxy. And I went down to have a look, and lo and behold, there he was on the mat teaching. And that was it. I, I decided that was uh, definitely the way, the way to go. So. Did you fall in love straight away? Was it, did, was that like, yeah. It, it was crazy, yeah, straight away. Like I said, I'd, I'd watched it for years and coming up and I'd be staying up in the middle of the night watching it on Bravo or whatever channels it was being uh, being shown on. So I'd got a knowledge of um, not so much how to do this stuff, but I knew like what I was looking for, do you know what I mean? I, I knew what I was watching. So when I turned up for the training session, first my, my initial thing was I'm going to turn up, I'm going to have a watch, see what it's like, because I weren't expecting Dave to be there. I was expecting someone who trained with him to be using his <laughs> name or something like that. Um, and I turned up and I watched and I was like, bloody up, this, is, this looks quality. There was, um, I don't know, you know Deniston Sutherland? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he was there um, training in really, really small class. And there's Max, um, Luke Dalmido, um, a couple of others. And I, I see them and the way Dave was training and teaching, I was like, mate, this is, this is what I want to do. This looks quality. So, uh, yeah, come, come back the next week and jump straight in and, and didn't look back. I just fell in love. Yeah, and the thing with Dave, Dave Lee, Dave, really for the UK is quite an early adopter. I mean, he, he was fighting in, uh, the, uh, I think he was on UFC, maybe what, UFC 45 or something. Um, yeah, one of the real early ones. Yeah, yeah early. one of the kind of mid to early ones. And, I mean, there was, uh, not that I'm aware of, there was no UK base fighters um, fighting in the UFC then, or very minimal. There's hardly any. Maybe. I, think, I, think Ian Fre- I think Ian Freeman, um, yeah. Ian Freeman, Mark Weir, um, were, were the only real ones before Dave, I think. P- possibly a couple more, but yeah, not not a great deal. Dave was uh, a, a, like one of the one of the first ones, really. I mean, he, he was fighting back on, I think it was like Cage Rage 2 or something. I think he made his debut and stuff like that. So it was, it was real back in the day when it was uh, um, real small in this country. So. Yeah, and he's got, you know, he's really well-rounded. His, his jiu-jitsu is great as well. And he's, uh, you know, the feedback on Dave and Tim Crossface is always massively positive. Are you, is that when you're still based full-time now? With, with those guys? Yeah, I, I literally, I've, I've always been with them. Um, I start my career with them, I'm going to finish my career with them. There's nowhere else I'd, I'd want to be, do you know what I mean? They, Dave's knowledge is is unbelievable on every, every aspect. Do you know what I mean? I find I don't need to go anywhere really because Dave's strength and conditioning work, his, his knowledge is phenomenal. Um, his jiu-jitsu obviously speaks for itself. Um, yeah. his, his kickboxing, his boxing and and the way he coaches really fits for me. Do you know what I mean? I just, I just love the way he works. Um, since we moved to the NRG as well, we've got such a good setup there and we've got real good guys coming through. I don't, it's not even like I need to go anywhere else to get training partners. You know, you hear some people end up being like the big fish in the small pond and and being the best one in the gym or whatever it is, and then they have to move on. I haven't got that there because I literally get my ass kicked by people every day. It doesn't matter. I have to turn up on on point. Otherwise, I've got people like Sam Patterson. Um, <laughs> Reece, like, yeah, all, all these guys. Even Chris OB comes in, he puts the work in. You know what I mean? So we've got people there pushing everyone all the time. Martin Hudson, another one high level pro so uh yeah it's 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 quality there i can't i can't knock it at all yeah that, that's a big thing you make a good point there because you know being being um being the best in a club is never a good thing it's never ever a good thing and i mean you might you might be the best at, at something but yeah. to be constantly the best at everything and kicking everyone else's ass you ain't progressing and you i mean i remember when i first started doing bjj a couple of years ago and I'd gone from being a really, you know, good, accomplished boxer to doing this, um, and, and a black belt in martial arts, to doing this martial arts, to be fair, that was like alien to me. And, and I was watching it, like, and I, I dabbled, you know, bullshit really, but I dabbled. I think I actually need a ground game because I'm proficient on my feet, but someone takes me to the ground, I don't know, you know, it's not a good, it's not a good place for me. Yeah. And Man, it was, I hated it at first, to be fair. I wasn't, some people get addicted to jujitsu, ju- and I fucking hate it. I was like, I am getting my ass handed to me 24 7. But at some point, I just sat back. I remember vividly sitting back on the mat at Mill Hill, uh, BJJ with Nick Brooks, and thinking, you know what? 
the only difference is these people have been doing it longer than me. I just got to keep turning up. And, you know, now it's, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not um, the best in the club and I'm never going to be, but I'm holding my own. And you, it's, it's that whole thing with MMA or any fight sport. You, you're so lonely in that game. Even though you've got a team around you, you've got to keep pushing yourself and being self-motivated to go and, and be, and have your ass handed on you to grow. I mean, that's the only way. Yeah. And um, I can see how it's addictive. Massively, I was addicted to boxing. And um, I remember once going to Creek with the boys. I think I was probably about 18 years old. And on, I was sitting at this bar. We were all meant to be on a night out. And we were all drinking cocktails. And I was sitting on the screen. It was like UFC 3 or 4. Being, being shown or repeated. Hank Abbott was fighting. And I never moved from the bar all night. They must have shown about six hours of, of UFC repeats. And I was just hooked to it. Those early days with Dan Seven and Tank Abbott, it's like, and Tito and Chuck. That shit got people into it. Like Tyson got people into boxing. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, 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 it's crazy. But like, the, like you say, the, um, you have to stick with it and you have to take your beatings and lose and stuff. The thing is, you can't have an ego, really. Do you know what I mean? You, you have to... You learn in so many different ways. Like you learn from someone teaching you, you learn from teaching others, you learn from winning, you learn from losing, you learn from all of these things. So, I mean, I, I always preferred the, the stand up. Um, do you know what I mean? I like like a good scrap. Um, so I preferred the stand up, and I, I shied away from the gi so much. Do you know what I mean? I, I didn't mind the, the um, no gi, and I'd be like, oh yeah, it's no gi because I prefer MMA to gi, and I'd get my ass beat in the gi. Um, but slowly and but surely, it started to click that you need the gi as well, man. You need to persevere and, and not not have an ego. Not worry if you get tapped. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Tap and start again. Just keep going. Um, and slowly but surely, yeah, you, I, I just fell in love with all of it. Do you know what I mean? The, the whole sport, all, all aspects of it. I mean, I used to try and think, um, try and be like, and, and I get pushed all the time by everyone in all aspects. I used to try and be like the hardest worker in the room. I'm like, I'm going to outwork everyone, and that way. Even if I'm getting a beating, I'll be fitter than them, so then I win. But like I said, now with the team, we've got so many people. Sam Patterson, again, I'm the same person, but he works hard than anyone of my life. Do you know what I mean? Um, so even now, trying to be the hardest person, working person in the room, is, I'm still not the best at that. But yeah. it, all of that stuff makes me improve and makes me want it even more. So it's, it's, it's a great sport. And like I say, you in the team, it's not even like a team, it's like a family now. Everyone's so yeah. close, everyone helps everyone out with everything. Do you know what I mean? You need you need anything done, there's there's people there, plumbers there, there's carpenters there, there's this, there's that. You phone someone up there, come and help you out. It's it's not like once you leave that then then you're on your own. It's a, it's a real good team team sport, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's I mean that's 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 a great thing really to be honest. That that sense of team and community is very um innate to human beings anyway. So uh, to be part of something is always gonna make you, you train better and harder and, and willing to take in info and learn um rather than just trying to kind of DIY it. Um yes, it, does. it doesn't work, it doesn't work in any sport. Get you to a certain level, but no, it won't after that. You do need a team. Yeah. So you're full time now, right? You're full time fighting. So how how long how long have you been full time? Um, I think I've been full time now. It must be coming up two years, something like that. Excuse me. Is, is that it must be about for Bellator? Yeah, just before I signed for Bellator, when I was at Brave, um, it was uh, it was looking like it was going to go all right, and I, I could do it. Um, and then once the Bellator contract come in, I was like, all right, yes, yeah, I'll, I'll be able to, to cover this. So I'd, I'd actually turned full time a little bit before, and just chanced it. Do you know what I mean? With with a little bit of money that I'd had left from work and stuff like that um so yeah kind of kind of winged it for a little bit until i actually got the contract but it was yeah it was sweet so then once i had that i've been signed for bellator oh, it must be in, must be a year or so now i've actually been signed with them because I, I fought on bellator 200 um on a one fight deal then uh after that i got a four flight contract and then after my last fight in November, so in December, I just signed a new four fight contract. So I've got another four fight deal with them. Okay. So I've got at least another four fights. Um, hopefully, by the, by the end of that, or before the end of that, I'll, I'll get another renewal and, like I say, just keep going. I um, I watched your last fight in Bellator. Um, yep. I thought you were robbed. 
Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I, and that's a I, Yeah. Um, I mean, I, mean, I, know, I, know, I, know, I know other people um, had a similar opinion. I thought you nicked it, personally. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's the fight game, I guess, right? Uh, this, this is the trouble, man. It, that is the fight game. I think, I think it was... To me, I felt like it was convincing. I thought I won the first two rounds convincingly. Yeah. Um, and as, from the people I've spoke to, 99% of the people I speak to say I won the first two rounds convincingly. I mean, if you watch the end of the fight, he says to his coaches at the end, like, oh, I didn't do enough, did I? And they went, no. Um, the referee, like, looks at us and he goes, mate, that's, like, I can't believe that. Like, it was I a great fight. But, yeah, it, that's wrong. His coaches had said to me, like, I'm pretty sure you won that. Do you know what I mean? It's, but it is what it is. That's, that is the sport. Um, and from everything you learn. And I learned from that that I, I need to be pushing more. I should have finished him in the first round. I dropped him twice in the first round. Maybe I should coast a little bit too much. I got sloppy and, and, and took that knee right at the in the second round, which obviously uh, in the judges' eyes cost me. Um, so mm. I learned from it. I'll, I'll, I'll improve and I'll come back. But, I mean, I'm not taking that as like a, a, a devastate, oh, God, I lost, yeah, I've, I've got my ass beer. Because I, I feel like I won that fight, you know what I mean? And, and I think everyone, I think it proves the way Bellator gave me a, a new contract and stuff, I think it proves that they, one, they like the way I fight, and two, it's not like they're going, oh, no, he's, he's just got beaten and blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's, it's all right. It's what it is, man. It's what it is. Yeah, that's one thing that really strikes me about you now, actually, is that you're, you're not taking that loss. Like, it's not, it doesn't seem that it's crushing you. And you're, you're humble about your achievements, but you're also humble about the loss. And you're analysing it really in a really productive way and not, you know, you, you just know it is what it is and, and you can control that, it seems. And you've got four fights ahead of you now. So, you know, upwards and upwards. This is it. This is it. I think it, I can either let it eat me up and be bitter about it and make a load of noise and, and complain. What's and, the point? Yeah, it's going to waste my energy and take the energy away from me going, OK, I know what I need to improve on. This is what the judges are looking for. This is what I should have been doing. This is what I could have done better, do you know what I mean? And improve and, and, and be better. Like I said, don't get me wrong, listen, when, when it first happened for the first week or so, it, it was sore, man, and it, it yeah. hurt. And I'm, I'm trying, trying to blame people, like I say, blame judges, blame this, blame that. It's, it, but I look back and I think, you know what, the judges have got a hard, hard time in there. and They get a lot of stick, especially if you've seen the last couple of UFCs and they're saying that the judging's been really bad. Is it because there's no crowd there, so now they hear the commentators and they hear this and they hear that? But if you ever watch a fight, especially live at a venue, you see different things depending on whereabouts you are around the cage, depending on who's sitting behind you, whether it's their crowd or his crowd. It's it's all such a hard sport. One one shot may look like it's a great great punch up. The knee that he hit me with, from one angle, it looks like he's almost knocked me out. Yeah. If you look at the back angle, it hits me, and I grab his legs and pull him on top. Do you know what I mean? So, so from one angle, it looks like, oh my God, he's dropped him. He's on my thumb. So, I can't, I can't let that eat me up and blame anyone else. I was the one in there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If I, if I'd finished him in the first round after dropping him, it don't go to the judges, does it? So, yeah. I've just got to use it, make myself better, and, and keep going. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you, you've got a great attitude towards it. I'm sure you and your team will make some adjustments. Uh, the next fight. Um, you were meant to fight May sixteenth. Yes. Yeah. So that's, obviously, that was called off, right? Uh, yeah, 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 for yeah. its reasons. Is there any? I mean, this is a difficult thing to answer, I suppose. But is there any uh, indication when that might be rescheduled to? Well, not Would really. Now, pardon? Will it be the same opponent? As far as I know, I think what they're going to look at doing is just rescheduling the whole show and same opponent and stuff like that and just trying to churn them out as soon as they get the go-ahead. The trouble right. is getting the go-ahead and then getting the venues and getting it all logistics-wise sorted. Um, because I know, I was speaking to the matchmaker and, and watching what um, um, Scott Coker and stuff has been saying, and he was saying that he was looking at trying to get shows back running in America in July sort of time but behind closed doors, get a few going behind closed doors, not put anyone at risk and all that, but they weren't looking until about July. Right. Um, 
with the fact that in the UK, all I'm hearing is gyms won't even be open until July, is I can't see, I cannot see a show being put on before near the end of the year. You know what I mean? I think, I think maybe the European series, we might get one more show in before the end of the year. Who knows? Who knows? But, I mean, it's, it's all well and good. Um, don't get me wrong, I let myself go a little bit, having the baby and all that sort of thing. Um, I had a few weeks off. Um, trying to run every now and again has been a pain in the ass, trying to keep my weight down and stuff like that. Um, I'm, I'm back on trying to get, um, get a routine going, looking after the little and, and helping the missus out and all this sort of thing. But um, I know there are guys out there training and, and pushing and, and keeping quite fit, but that's not, that's not, that's not fight fit. Do you know what I mean? They'd, they'd have to have at least four weeks if, like, with the gyms open before they can put a show on. Even if you was fit and near weight, you'd still need yeah. a couple of sparring partners to do this sort of thing. I mean, I go, I go, um, when I lived at my mum's, I'd built uh, a gym in the back garden, um, just a big shed um, with my punch bag, treadmill, floor to ceiling ball, all that sort of thing. Um, yeah, yeah. So since, since they said about um, the lockdown being a little bit more eased, as in like you can um, go out for longer and all that sort of thing, what I'm doing now is I'm going, rather than just going for one run a day and, and trying to do whatever I can, I've now been going to my mum's, go down the back alley so I don't have to go to the house, go straight into the gym, hit the bag again now and all this sort of thing. Um, so I'm slowly building up, but it's not, it's not the same. It's not the same as sparring. It's not the same as grappling. It's not the same as, as any of that, hitting pads even. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's going to be, once the gym's open, I'm, people are going to need at least four weeks if they were fit. More like eight weeks, maybe a camp to get in. So I think personally, probably... October, November, maybe they're, they're starting to show back on again. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a big difference between fit and sharp. And I kind of, I mean, I, I could be off here, but I kind of feel that was a little bit what happened with Tony Ferguson um, the other week, actually. I think he was, he had two weight cuts and he just, in, that, in succession, it just, just done him. I think it done him. You know there, there were two, two things with that fight. Um, one, Tony Ferguson. Cutting weight twice in a couple of weeks is stupid. It's stupid, especially when he didn't need to. Um, so he's he, because when you're training for a fight, had, the, the closest I've had two fights or two weight cuts was four weeks apart. I fought once, cut weight, four, four weeks later I had to cut weight again. Now, my weight cut for that was superb because I'd stayed in shape the whole time. I hadn't let myself go and it was all right. But I was training properly. I was um, sparring. I was, I was doing the right stuff. He's been trying to do this on his own to get to a weight. I, then for no reason it's going to have drained it to then do it again a couple of weeks later it won't even four weeks a couple of weeks later really probably would have affected him but I also feel Gaethje needs to be given a lot of credit a lot of credit I mean oh, I love Gaethje from when he was at World Series before phenomenal but he led with his chin he didn't care whether he got hit and he'd hit you yeah. back just try and hit you harder and his leg was devastating and got rocked but he'd come back again and uh, it was good when he got found out a little little bit with um, Boye, that you can't just do that against the best guys in the world. You have to have some sort of like, ability to move and stuff. And you, I see the change when he fought Taroni. He actually had head movement. He, the guy can pop. The guy's superb. He's phenomenal. Um, but he just liked to go in there and brawl. Um, and if you watch the Ferguson fight again, mate, his, his head movement, his slips, his, his yeah. counter fighting was superb. Mate, he just, yeah, he was, he was, and he hits like a truck, doesn't he? And he, he yeah. hits phenomenally. Um, his wrestling superb so you don't have to wrestling so good obviously the weight cut and stuff did affect him but I don't know you just can't tell whether it would have been the difference in the fight because Gaethje is so good so. well it's hard to know I mean I mean Gaethje I'm a huge fan um, I mean his boxing his, his boxing was bang on point as well as everything else against Ferguson but as they were walking down to the cage I was watching it the next morning with someone, and I said, "Damn, man, Ferguson's like skin. He like looks like his skin looks drawn in. He almost looks like he's got jaundice. He looks like yellow. Just doesn't look well." And I just, I, I, I tipped. I was more in the, the favour of Gaethje anyway before the fight, before I'd seen anything, before I'd seen any weigh-ins. I fancied Gaethje to win. Um, I just thought stylistically it would suit yeah. the fight, but. I mean, as soon as I saw the ring walk and the way in, actually, I was like, oh, man, I'm not so sure. Ferguson should have even taken the fight. He should have just backed off completely. But, I mean, he's a fighter. That's what fighters do sometimes to their own detriment. <laughs> yeah, you know what? This, this is the trouble. I think 
it, you know what? After a weight cut, I don't know where, what it was like with you when you was boxing and stuff. How much you really cut weight and and, and things like that. And look, when you're younger, I don't know whether they let you cut so much weight. I mean, for me personally, when I cut weight, I'll cut a lot in the last bit. I'll put a load back on again before the fight and stuff like that. But to actually get your body back recovered after a weight cut, it's going to take a couple of weeks anyway. So to to do two in a trot. Like you say, he was still drawn out. He probably wasn't recovered from the first one in two weeks, let alone doing a second one straight on top. So it's, it would have definitely had an effect. Um, yeah. But like I say, I, mate, you can't take anything away from Gaethje. I, I actually um, thought Gaethje would win. My money would have been on Gaethje. Um, just the fact that um, it's crazy and he's, he's unpredictable and he's got a great, great game, but he gets caught a lot. If you know, he's, he's always taking a shot. And Gage is the type of guy who you can't afford to take shots from. You know what I mean? So I always, always favoured Gaethje. Um, I still would have loved to have seen the, the Habib Tony fight, um, Ferguson fight. But I think Gaethje's going to be again. Gaethje's going to be a, an absolute nightmare for Habib, and, and we we really see what Habib's made of in this fight. I agree. I completely agree. I think that's going to be a great fight. And um, Gaethje, Gaethje's not um, not the sort of guy anyone's going to have an easy time fighting. Put it that way. It's um, yeah, I mean, going back to weight cuts just briefly, that's, that's something Joe Public don't see. Joe Public always make assumptions, like, you know, two fighters walk into the, the ring or the cage and they're, they should be perfect and everything's great. But, man, I, I remember when I boxed out in Vegas and um, about two days before, my opponent pulled out. And they said, look, we've got someone for you, but it's the weight class below. I had to cut another four kilo off my weight already in two days. I'm as the, the the day of the fight that morning. The fight was in the evening. That morning I was so weak and so drained that I could barely pick up the bottle of water on the side of my bed. I was lying on the bed and I thought, "Fuck, man! I feel like I've got flu." That's how ill I was. But funny enough, I rehydrated. I ate, had the fight, and boxed really that evening. <laughs> That evening I actually did, I started to come out and I got flu and I was ill for five days after. It just works your body and Joe Public, especially MLA and boxing fans are the worst. They sit in there um, and I respect them because there's no sport without a fan. So a lot of people will listen to this. So I'm not for any second slagging the fight fan, but you know, it's, it's easy for them, oh, why didn't you do this? Or why didn't you do that? Or oh, I look so slow and blah, blah, blah. And it's not always that easy. There's so many variables, which is why for someone like George St. Pierre or um, any forward, Khabib, Habib, anyone that's gone on a long winning streak, yeah. losing, it's, sometimes people don't appreciate how difficult that is. Mate, for like whoever, every weight cut, every fight, every style of opponent to go on a long streak like that, that's yeah. freaking hard. Mate, it's, it's super. Like, it's near, near on impossible. In, in MMA, near on impossible. Well, even in boxing. I mean, even in boxing, it's, it's near on impossible. What, what Floyd's done in boxing um, is, is unheard of, really, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's not... Yeah. You just... There's so many variables. Um, and again, like I say, in, in MMA, there's even more variables, isn't there? So many ways to lose or so many ways to win. Um, but it's not just the fight that you need to get right. You need to get your training right, your nutrition right, your weight cut right, your rehydration right, your rest right, and all of that, your warm-up right. I've, I've seen people lose a fight because of the warm-up. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They've got the warm-up room and, and it goes, that mentally something goes wrong and, and they lose in a fight that they should have won. Um, I mean, I've, I've had weight cuts that were absolutely horrendous and won fights. I've had weight cuts that have been superb and lost fights. Do you know what I mean? I've, so how, how much do you cut? So let's talk about your weight cut. How much do you... How much do you cut typically? So you fight at 155? 155, yeah, I fight at, yeah. So 70, 70, 70. What do you walk around that? Oh, uh, it, it all depends. It depends. I'm normally walking around around 85 kilos. So 180, 185, 190, something like that. Um, yeah, so you're kind of quite a lot of weight, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, 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 surpassed, one, <laughs> I've surpassed 85 kilos quite a few times. And, uh, <laughs> Cut from 90 and stuff like that. But, I mean, it all depends on how out of shape I'm letting myself get. It depends where I am on a weight cut. So, normally, what I'll do is an eight-week camp, or I say an eight-week camp. I'm training all day, every day. So, it's not like, all right, this is fight camp. But when I say an eight-week camp, it's more, okay, I dial my diet in. 
I've done my training in more specifics and that sort of thing and start getting my weight down. Um, so I normally look around eight weeks. So if I'm 85, eight weeks out, I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm comfortable making the weight. Um, but it's more about the, the last week, which is the hard part. So I normally cut around seven kilos in the last week, something like that. I don't know whether that's a massive amount compared to some people. It might be less than some people. It's, it's probably average. Um, but I normally cut around seven kilos of water in the last week. Um, but then by the time I rehydrate, so I'll, I'll probably do maybe two or three on the last day or last night. Um, yeah. but once I've rehydrated them back on the scales to fight, um, back in fight shape, mate, I've been, I've been all the way up to like 80 odd kilos again. Yeah, no, it's easily done. The, the, good, the good thing with Bellator is, is, I don't know whether many people know this, Bellator actually do the double weight. So they weigh you in, so you weigh in, um, do all the, the stuff, rehydrate and all that, and before you fight, so you're going to the changing rooms, you're getting ready, they come around and weigh you again um, to make sure that you haven't put on more than 10% of what you've cut. Do you know what ah, I mean? Ah, didn't know they do that. Yeah, so they don't count to fight. Now, don't get me wrong. So it means if I weigh in at 70 kilos, I shouldn't be more than 77 kilos by the time I fight. Otherwise, they, the, the Athletic Commission, the Hegan Sun Athletic Commission, feel like you're, it's too much of a drastic weight cut. Now, I'd regularly put on more than that a lot of the time. Um, but it's not like they're going to cancel the fight. What they look at is, are you putting on a drastic amount more than that? Like if I was walking in at 85 kilos after weighing at 70, they'd be going, okay, yeah, you're definitely cutting far too much. It's not healthy. It's not good for you. Or if yeah. people are missing weight and then checking and going, oh, look, you're putting on far too much. You're cutting too much. Um, and if you're a lot over too many times, they'll ask you to move up a weight class. Um, so they're, they're looking out for you, um, like, um, health-wise and stuff anyway. Your safety so, and health, yeah. And like I say, it's not like they're going, oh, no, you've got to make weight twice on, drained and all that sort of thing. They just keep a monitor on it. So they know what I've weighed in at. They know what I've rehydrated to. If it's starting to get a little bit dodgy, they'll go, no, nah, look, we think you need to move up a weight. Or, no, you need to get your nutrition in. Or maybe they'll, they'll say, in your camp, they'll send out a request. Because you have to do so many different medicals and things like that. They'll say, okay, a doctor needs to assess you at this time and let us know that you are capable of making this weight safe. So it's, it's really good. And like I say, being signed to Bellator is superb because you don't get that on the local shows. You don't get that on, on the smaller shows and stuff. So. Well, there's it, it not enough protection. I mean, one of, one of the most dangerous things about the fight sport is hydration and is that weight cut. I mean, there's, there's fluid in, in and around that brain that you need. And when you dehydrate, you're going to lose fluid in and around your brain. If you're going to start taking you know, going for three or five round walls and graduating, I'm, it's a recipe for, for a, a serious disaster. And we've seen it over the years, slightly less so in the May, um, but in boxing. over the years of boxing with Joe McLennan, Michael Watson, um, and, and others, you know, you normally get, I think on average, it's eight to 12 um, professional boxing deaths per year. Um, and that's a lot. No one should die doing the sport they love. I know it's a dangerous sport, but we don't want anyone to die in MMA and boxing, NFL. Um, you know, NFL, they, they get terrible brain injuries, but then they're not they're not weight cutting as well. They they're going in fully hydrated, um, potentially yeah. probably jacked up as well. And you know, with the brain injuries. So it's um that's that's good that Bellator do that, and they you know you never know it's the fight game that's unpredictable. But you yeah. you know you've got kids, you've got family, so do most of the other fighters. That we've all got some sort of family, and yeah. you want to win and you want to put a beat down on your opponent. But at the end of the day, um, very 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 rarely does happen. Is there legitimate bad blood, and you really want to see someone hurt? You get ramped up, you build the opponent up in the mind. You do what you need to do. But after the fight's said and done, you know what? Well, it's 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 a sport. You want to be the best. You don't want to lose. Yeah. So, but um, we don't want to see anyone hurt properly. Um, so Bellator, listen, that that you know, you, you say the name UFC, you say the name Bellator. You've you've hit a certain level. Talk to me about that call. what happened. Like when did uh, like when did you find out you were signing for Bellator? How did that happen? Do you know what? It was, it was, a, it was a weird one because I signed with Bray, um, who are, on their own right are a superb show, man. Uh, from the Middle East, um, mate, I've travelled the world fighting for them. Massive show. They're going to be 
pushing a couple of years, I think they're going to be one of the biggest ones. Um, so I was fighting on a decent show. And then uh, my contract had run out with them. Um, and they were looking at re-signing me and things like that. And then my manager phoned me saying, look, there's a possibility of you fighting on Bellator 200 um, in London. And I was like, mate, that sounds superb. Wow. It, will, it, will it affect me signing with Brave again and this and that? You've got one fight deal, what's, what's going on? Um, so he said, look, leave it with me. Let me chat them to see, see what I can deal with. Um, thankfully, Brave said, look, go for it. Push, have that fight, see how you get on and, and, and go from there, which is superb of them, man, to... to to say that, and they said, "Look, you can come re-sign with us afterwards." Um, so obviously, the, the fight I'd spoken to Jude Samuel, the, the matchmaker and stuff like that, and he was saying, "Look, push hard, man. Make make a statement, and there's a chance you get a contract." They're, they're looking at building because this was before the European series had started, um, and he was like, "Look, make a statement, and there's a chance you get a contract." Blah blah. Push hard, and he was like, "Mate, this is this is life changing." So I have to go out there and really put a performance on or whatever it is. Um, Obviously, I got the win um, and then was saying to them, OK, I want the contract, trying to talk to the right people, say the right things. Um, my manager was pushing. And then it seemed to go a little bit quiet for a while. Um, so we were negotiating again with Brave and uh, they come back and offered me a decent contract. Um, and I, listen, I, was, I was willing to sign with them. They, they are a great company to work for. Um, and then Bellator finally come back again and said, no, no, look, we, we beat that offer. Um, and, mate, there was, there was no two ways about it. I mean, the money was better. It's a, it's a bigger, more well-known show, better yeah. opportunities. It was, it, was all the time. it was just, like I say, it was life-changing for me. It, was, uh, it meant that I could fight full-time, legitimately be a full-time fighter, um, win, win a fight, and it's pretty much me, my year's wage or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that really, that, that really is amazing. That's just a product of, of the hard work you put in, you know. Um, often anyone successful puts in years of hard work and it's a grind and then you get that one big jump up out of nowhere. Um, so what, um, you're full-time as, as we know now, but what, what does your day look like in terms of, I mean, not your coronavirus day, type of day. Yeah. If, if we weren't in lockdown, what's, um, what's the training schedule normally? How does it look? So normally, like before, because I've, my daughter, my daughter was born three weeks ago, so uh, that's that's going to change things again now. The wife's off work, but um, before all of this happened, um, my wife would get up and go to work. She was working full time at a doctor surgery, um, and I'd wake up, drop my son at school, um, then I'd go into training. I'd either do some strength and conditioning work for an hour or so. Sometimes I'd have a private to, to teach and things like that, um, or I'd have someone come in to do a little bit of strength and conditioning with me. Um, I then, then I train. That's normally from like nine till ten thirty. Then the class is ten thirty till about twelve. Um, so depending on what day it is, a lot of time it's just um, in the daytime. It's like an MMA fundamental or MMA class, bit of um, drilling, bit of grappling, bit of whatever people turn up and we do a um, bit of sparring at the end. Um, Again, depending on what day it is, sometimes I'd have a private afterwards or later on in the afternoon. Um, if not, I'd, I'd come home, get some lunch, uh, go and pick my son up from school and bring him home, get to spend a little bit of time with him. Um, and then when my wife got back from work, I'd then go back to training again in the evening and train again from six o'clock in the evening, doing um, whatever class it was, uh, pads or jiu-jitsu or MMA or, or CSW, whatever, um, and then finish the day off, either, depending on whether I had a fight coming up or not. If I had a fight, then we'd normally do some specific sparring rounds at the end for me while a different class was going on, or I'd go and do a run or something like that. But it's, uh, it, was, it was full on, you know what I mean? I'm training, training at least twice a day, depending on fitting in clients as well and stuff like that. So it's, uh, yeah. it was a busy day. And, and I got to spend a lot of time with my son and stuff like that. So it was nice. So you say you, you you do a lot of output, which which is I mean which you should be doing. What do you have a nutritionist? What what happens on that side of things? Do you do your own nutrition? I, no, see, I I wish I had a nutritionist. I mate, I, my diet. The, my trouble is my diet outside of fighting, and when I haven't got a weight cut, when I haven't got to be on point, is terrible. I eat so much. <laughs> fat. But I think normally because I'm so strict on on the fight camp and having to get down to that way. Um, once I finished doing that, 
I just want to let myself go. Do you know what I mean? I'll, oh yeah, I've been on this, I've been on that. So that's terrible for me. Um, I've never had a nutritionist. I find, honestly, I've been in sport so long and having Dave's knowledge and stuff rub off on me so many times over the years. And listen, we, we're still improving. We're still changing things. I mean, the first weight cut and stuff I used to do, we used to sit in the sauna in a sweatsuit with a tracksuit on and, and shit like that. Like, just crazy, crazy stuff. I've um, done it. I've done it. Yeah. Try and suck on lemons or whatever and, and sleep in the sweat. Just crazy stuff. So the fact that we've improved every time it's getting a little bit better. Now, uh, uh, products like Sweet Sweat makes a massive difference in weight cuts and stuff. So, but I've learned a lot of nutrition and what works for me. Do you know what I mean? I think everyone's body's different. I mean, for, for starters, I, I can't eat eggs. I don't like eggs. I cannot stand them, which is a big downfall. A lot of um, fitness guides and stuff, oh, yeah, eggs. Because I spoke to a nutrition what, nutritionist once. He said, oh, yeah, what you need to do, you have eggs with this and blah, blah, then you have a salad with this egg and blah, blah. I said, mate, I can't eat eggs. And he's like, oh, oh, shit, what do you do there? So for me personally, I know what sort of things I can eat that will put my weight on. I know what I can eat that will start bringing it down. I know when I start needing to cut in my carbs and all that sort of thing. So I'm not too drastic on needing a nutritionist per se. I could really do with, say, like a meal prep company or, or something like that, helping out, or a nutritionist who send me the food, all right, yes, well, I've done. So I don't have to come home, cook it all and do all this and do all that. Because it's quite yeah, yeah, yeah. I did I did work with a nutritionist, anim, animalistic nutrition or something I think it was, um, for the the rehydration from my last one. I think the last one was, might have been the one before. No, I think it was the last one. Um, where they were at the way, because they were saying, look, we're come, we're helping with the last week's meals and all this. And I said, look, I'm not going to be at a hotel fight hotel until two days or the day before the weight cut anyway it's pointless um but you can help with the rehydration and they made up the rehydration shakes they brought me like four different meals around told me what time to eat and mate to be fair it worked great it really i felt good because sometimes I, I go over the top now i feel too bloated i don't eat enough or eat too little but, um so having that knowledge and stuff it helps but it's all money the trouble is a lot of it's all money um and yes i'm full-time and yes I earn enough to to train it and, and fight full time, but it's not like I'm made of money. Do you know what I mean? There, there's not a massive amount of money in the fight game. So pe- people think, oh, yeah, you're a full time fighter. Yeah, you must be, be rolling it, but it's not. And, and everything costs money. Do you know what I mean? You're always paying out. So it's it's weighing up how much am I going to pay out for that when I, I could do it myself and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I mean, you, you say that about the money, and, and, and you're right. I mean, even if you were, you were uh, someone that was lucky enough to earn a million quid or a million dollars, whatever, from a fight, it's not really a million quid. You, you've got to pay your coaches, your nutritionist, your, uh, your traveling things are probably paid for most of the times, but everyone down the line basically needs to be paid, your agent, your manager, whatever. And, you know, it's, it's a million pound, and I'm just giving that huge figure, it might only be 10 grand for some fighters or 100 grand. But, you know, they say, oh, you earned 100 grand for one night's work. It's like, well, no, it wasn't one night's work. I've been grafting my ass off for 12 weeks or every day, basically behind the scenes. So, and, and, you know, not getting paid anything. So it's, um, you know, it, it is tough. And you do need to, especially the guys that aren't, you know, at maybe Conor McGregor's pay scale, you, you've got to be your own doctor your own nutritionist a little bit you need to um you really need to educate yourself and i think mma is quite good like that most fighters do understand the value in taking on board um things that will help optimize their performance through nutrition and they're not completely uneducated in that yeah. boxing is still in the dark ages especially amateur boxing yeah. which is ridiculous pro boxing is a little bit better at the top level but still not great um but yeah, to be honest, you have to be in, you say that about eggs, it's funny, I'm a functional nutritionist, so I do nutrition with athletes, fighters, mm-hmm. players, people that have had complex diseases, and you name it, this is what I do, or what I do, and I don't eat eggs, because eggs give me all sorts of issues, so yeah, mm-hmm. it's a great profile, but if I eat eggs, I'm bloated, I'm snotty, mucousy, I get inflammation, so it's not a one-size-fits-all, and if if any nutritionist or any trainer is saying to someone, you have to eat that, oh, well, if you can't eat that, it's no good, then you need to find a new one, basically. <laughs> yeah, this is it. Yeah, 100%. 100%. That's, that's the thing. There's, there's so many people out there who, mate, they, they pretend they're nutritionists. They, they, 
do an online course or they read something and they oh yeah i'm this i'm a, I'm a personal trainer i'm a nutritionist i'm this i'm that I'm, they're, they're selling herbal life or whatever it is and and yet yeah, mate they, they don't they don't know and they, they write the same food plan for every single client that they've got oh yeah this works so just have that which is naughty and and it's not it's not a good thing to be happening but um that's like i say I, this is why i try and stick with what i know it's been working this i've been i've been fighting 10 years now or whatever it is i've, I've never i've had 20 29 pro fights or something um wow. i've never missed never missed weight in my life um i know what i can have i know what i can't have um i've always said i've always said yeah, i quite I'm a bit of a sauce guy like i'll have a salad i like a salad dressing with it or if i cook up my chicken i like a little bit of sauce on there whether it's uh, a nando sauce or it's, it's a hot sauce or I like a bit of sauce. Now, there's some people going, oh, you shouldn't have that. There's so many calories in it. But I've always said, if this gets to a point where I'm, I'm trying to eat I mean, plain boiled chicken, <laughs> I'm, I'm going up a weight. I'm, I'm, I'd rather go up and, and, and buy a higher weight and, and try and kill myself and, and take all the enjoyment out of food and all that sort of thing. You know what I mean, I'm, I'm cutting a lot of it out already. I'm having small meals. I want to at least enjoy what I'm having at the time. Yeah. Um, and a happy fighter is going to be a better fighter, let's be honest. I mean, if you're unhappy through camp and unhappy with everything's a grind, it's like you're never going to perform as well as you can. And, and the thing is, it then, it then becomes a job. And then you hate going training and you hate, you hate doing it. And you go, oh, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. Mate, I got into this sport because I loved it. Yeah. I'm super lucky that I can do it and make a living out of it. If I make that a grind, and then it, I might as well go back and work on the building i might as well go where i can go and have fun with my mates and eat a burger at the end of the day and stuff like that do you know what yeah. i mean it's, it's not it's not like that um like i say i'm not i'm not earning the money it's not like oh man you won't give up all that money i'm not earning crazy money um but another thing i'm, I'm quite lucky with like you say if you earn a million dollars or a million pound in one fight you've got to take out your management fee straight away your taxes that you paid then you have to pay your coaches your training partners your nutritionists yeah. All your equipment, all this sort of thing, you have to pay out. Um, we're really lucky at Crossface. I've been so lucky. Um, whereas, what, obviously, I get my travel and one corner man travel for my fights and accommodation and stuff like that. But I've got guys um, who come and corner me all around the world that have paid their own flights and stuff to come and help out. Um, they don't. I'll, I'll stay in like of like OB. He comes and he'll hold pads for me to cut weight at whatever time of night it is, um, and he doesn't charge me. Do you know what I mean? Where he could be a earning a, a percentage out of it um that people come and do extras on on a saturday night people do that for us at this club and they don't they don't ask for it back all all you ask for is for you to be there for them when when they need it as well and that's how we work uh, with so it's not like everyone's trying to take a little piece of your your money so that's it's one good thing which means i do come away with a little bit more than i would if i was somewhere else you know what i mean but, um, like you said, it's a family and you're, you're loyal to that. So that, that's, that's really good, man. What, um, so, nutrition, what about supplements? Do any supplements at all? No, well, I, I tried, I, I'd normally try um, and stay away from it. I take a multivitamin um, and stuff like that, so I do my vitamins and stuff. Um, and sometimes if, if I've had trouble before with like um, meniscus and things like that, and I'll take um, glucosamine and, and things. Yeah. Um, sometimes I find if I'm, I'm slacking a little bit in training, I'm feeling a little bit down, um, I'll take some BCAAs. Yeah. Um, now, now, don't get me wrong, I've, there's so many like pros and cons and people telling you this thing and people saying another thing. Um, it may well be snake oil, it, it may work well for you, it may not. I think mentally, sometimes supplements are mentally better for you. Do you know what I mean? If I'm if I'm not taking it, I'm feeling drained and I take it, it makes me feel a little bit better. Whether it's working or not, it's mentally making me feel a bit better. That's it. But I try and stay away from too much, too many outside things. Do you know what I mean? I try and get everything I need from food. Rather than so, too you much take stuff electrolytes? What about electrolytes? <laughs> electrolyte powder. That, that for me was a game changer. Like an absolute yeah. game changer. It really was. Getting my sodium potassium magnesium up was a was a game changer yeah. that that i think really comes into effect um when especially when i'm cutting weight in a in a um eight week camp or whatever it yes. is yeah. them up because drinking water i'm trying to drink a load of water during the day anyway trying to keep my fluids up so the weight cuts a little bit easier and all this but the salts and all that sort of thing once you 
you've got rid of them and you're sweating them out and you're just putting the water in, mate, you start cramping, I've, I've had that sort of cramping up bad and all this. So like you say, that is definitely a game changer, getting that sort of thing right. Um, the electrolytes and all that sort of thing. We've, we've looked at a few different products. Me and Sam have looked at a few different ones. It's just, just finding the right ones and finding the ones with the right ingredients and stuff like that. I mean, especially being signed with Bellator, you've got to be so careful with what you put in your body. Um, yeah. you, can, you can test and you go, no, no, I'm clean, I haven't taken it. And then you look on the packet and it's got a banned substance or something like that, then you're in trouble. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. since Bellator has been really strict on what I take, um, like I say, I take a multivitamin. Um, very rarely I, do I take anything else. I take a bit of glucose, I mean, like I say, if, uh, if my joints are hurting or anything like that. Um, but I try and stay pretty pretty clean off of anything else just in case you never know there's so many tainted supplements out there that i don't think it's worth the risk do you know what i mean i've, I've just finally got the career that i wanted and could you imagine getting something and i oh. pride, pride myself on always been clean i've never never gone near anything like that do you know what i mean i've never touched anything i wouldn't i wouldn't dream of doing it it's pointless do you know what i mean i want to at the end of it i want to look back on my career and go that's what I've achieved, and that is what I have achieved. Like my hard work, my skills, my dedication. Not, oh, that's what I got. But I did take this. I did do that. What? Where would I've been without without it? Do you know what I mean? So uh, I wouldn't, oh, mate. I'd be devastated. Could you imagine taking a normal supplement and then going, oh yeah, no, it was tainted, mate. I'm not. I'm not John Jones. I can't. I can't afford to get the lawyers to prove that it's. <laughs> <laughs> you, know what I mean? it, it, you can't afford to hide under the cage for too long. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I've got a real fucking issue with with um, the fight game and doping. I mean, if, if you dope and you're a cyclist and you dope and you're a tennis player, you get an unfair advantage and you win, and the other guy potentially loses or what you know if whatever. Okay, and you get banned. When you do it in the fight game. You're taking someone deep into the later rounds and you're not running out of energy because you're on EPO or exactly. taking growth and you're extra strong and you're going to pound someone's face into the floor and give them brain damage because you're jacked out your eyeballs. I'm not fucking having that. I mean, and I believe that it's pro if it's proven without doubt, not tainted supplements, because I know these things can happen. If it's proven without doubt that that person was a nailed on cheat and they took performance enhancing drugs purely um for the benefit of them to enhance the performance within that in their game and that was proven there should be a life ban i, I really yeah. believe that personally because yeah. what they're going to do wait till someone dies and then it's, these things. it's not right in my opinion no, no mate, I, I completely agree completely agree but it's like you say if if you take it in your cycling, you beat the guy, all right, they might lose a little bit of money, they don't get that win or whatever it is, but you haven't smashed the guy's face in, you haven't crippled him, you haven't like given brain damage or anything. There's, there's so many potentials of hurting people in this sport. I know it is the sport of hurting people, but I mean, really hurting someone and you are jacked off your nuts. If morally it's not right, physically it's not right, it's, it's not right on any standard. And I, I feel like a lot of the time, People will do it for so long, they then get caught, they get a year's ban, mm. and then they're straight back in again. They don't lose them benefits in that year. Do you know what I mean? It's not like all them steroids then go and they go, oh shit, I'm back to square one. They've just kept all them benefits that they've used to then just progress again. Do you know what I mean? I, 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 I agree. I think if you, you are nailed on, the hard thing is getting it that nailed on yes that was definitely he's been done blah 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 um yeah yeah 100 they need they need something like that to stop people doing it because they, there is so many people on you know what i mean yeah they, they do i mean you, we've seen what you just said about people only having six months or a year ban and people like vita belfort you know vita belfort has been god knows how many times and so obviously yeah. it, it always seems like it was six months later he's fighting again in brazil or somewhere where yeah. Sweep things under the rug, and I don't want to call fighters that individually too much, but I mean, it's just that, that whole thing is an issue for me, um, to be honest. But um, all you can do is pride yourself on being a clean athlete and knowing that you've done the best of you can to your ability, and you can put your head on the pillow at night, really. To be honest, this, this, mate, this is it because whether they get caught or not, they have to they have to sleep with the memory of what whether that was them or not. Do you know what I mean? They they can parade around saying, yep, yeah, I was this, I was that, I won this, I won that. But they know, they know that 
it wasn't them, they, they were jacked. Do you know what I mean? And I, I can hand on heart go to bed at night and go, I achieved all of that. Do you know what I mean? No. That, that was that was my work, that was what I, I, I pushed for. So it's it is what it is, man. If if they yeah. want to do it. Yeah. It's, um... No, I think, again, a good point and, 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 and totally right. I mean, li- 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 living with those, with that, that nagging feeling on your mind is never going to be good. Um, so, five time UK champion, I want to go for, over this briefly when we covered it. Which was the sweetest one? Um, I think it's. Uh, see, the first, first is always going to be nice. Do you know what I mean? First, yeah. one, first one was always great. And that. That's the ultimate challenge title. Um, and winning the ultimate challenge one was a bit special because I'd grown up watching Cage Rage. I know obviously ultimate challenge come from Cage Rage. Um, so I grew up watching Cage Rage and all that sort of thing. Um, it's a title that my coach had had, Deniston had had. Um, obviously not the, the same weight, but that, that thing. So that was really sweet to actually get it, win a title and be like, mate, I'm, I, I can actually do this. Is This is achievable, was sweet. Yeah. Um, but I think... Um, I think it's got to be the, the, the best one, I think, was probably the FCC title. Um, when I beat Mick Bowman um, for the actual title and then I defended it against Rob Sinclair. I think, um, obviously, Mick Bowman was a, a tough fair. He'd been on Ultimate Fighter and all that sort of thing. I and mean, Rob Sinclair is absolute legend of the sport. Um, so to defend it against him, I think that's that's got to have been the sweetest. And, mate, they're, they're a great company as well. FCC, from, from amateur to pro, um, they really look after you. I've got on a great show and stuff like that. So, uh, it was, it was really nice to win that one. Amazing, man. Amazing, amazing stuff. So what is the... Um, we to wrap up soon because I've, I've kept you on here for a while and you've got a young kid and you probably haven't slept. So you've got to get back to the family. Um, so but what, what, is, what does the future hold now? So what, what's, what, where do you see yourself in? What do you want to achieve? Where are you going from here? You know what? Someone asked me this the other day. And look, I'm 30, uh, 37 now. So a lot of people look at me about 37 bloody other that's old, you must be retiring soon. I think I'm quite lucky with the fact that I haven't had many miles on my body because I wasn't doing it from a young age. Um, yeah. all, all, this, all the time and stuff like that. Um, I haven't had the mileage on my body. So I've got, I've got years left in me. Um, I still feel like I'm peaking, do you know what I mean? I'm not, I don't feel like I'm on a down spiral yet. Um, so, I mean, um, if I'm fighting, I'm, I'm going to fight until I'm either not putting on the performances that I should be doing, do you know what I mean? I'm not, like um, performing the way I should. I'm not entertaining the fans. I'm not putting on decent performances. Um, and so until my body, or until my body gives out. Um, so if, if I'm fighting until I'm 42, 45, then I, I will be. Um, as long as I'm enjoying it, then, then that's what I'll be doing. Um, sh- short term, obviously, I've got four fights with Bellator. Um, ideally, I really would love, obviously, get a couple of wins, get a contract renewal, get another four fights, that, which would take me another couple of years into I know I'm secure for a few years. Um, but yeah, I'll, after that, I'm, I'm going to stay in the sport, I'm sure. I'm sure I'll stay in the sport, whether it'll be um, management, coaching. I'm, I'm definitely going to stay in the coaching, but maybe going to a bit of management, maybe maybe, uh, maybe even going to refing or, or judging or something. Try, try and give back. You know what I mean, try and, try and give to everyone else and, and help everyone else progress as well. And, and the sport in a, in a whole progress. Good man, my man Charlie, you're doing a great thing out there. Um, just just keep doing what you're doing, it's working for you. I really look forward to the next fight. Um, so now let, let us know, well, let me know when that yeah. I'll make sure I plug that all over the media and over the podcast because um, mm-hmm. I'm excited to see that. Hopefully, it's in London. I mean, it might not be because of circumstances, but that'd be nice if it was. Fingers crossed, mate. Yeah, fingers crossed, it will be. Yeah, let's, let's hope they can just get it rescheduled and, uh, and back in. I know, I know they've still got got one scheduled for I think uh, um, Italy in October that hasn't been cancelled yet um, and possibly Ireland uh, late in the year but fingers crossed they can get get the London card rescheduled and, and I'll be on that so hopefully man we look forward to seeing you my man going to wrap it up here and um, it's great having you on and um, I look forward to doing it again maybe we'll do it again after your next fight and it's going to be a W so we can uh, we can talk about the, the way forward after that Any- Time, mate. Thank you very much for having me, mate. I appreciate it. Pleasure, man. Take care. Look after yourself. Take care, mate.